Howdy ho! A couple of things you always need to do before starting to animate a new scene. Check the preferences down here. In the time slider tab, this should be real time and not every frame. And in the settings tab, I would use 25 rather than, than 24 or 30 in Europe. And press save. Now I have the lamp. I also want to make a plane for the, to have a, a floor like that and I want to make this floor non-selectable you don't really have to do this but it is annoying when you try to select say these control points and the floor gets selected all the time so there's a couple of ways to do it um, to make it non-selectable one way is to go to the attribute editor go to um, object display find drawing overrides and in there enable overrides display types reference after that your object is not selectable if you need to you can select it in the outliner for example okay so we'll, we'll start putting in key poses as you would in classical animation so that can be my first key pose just the default pose and i'm going to be animating these two controls the base control and head control the the main control is just there to to position the the lamp wherever you want so these two and i will key the translate values and the rotate values with shift w and shift e and i have the auto key on because I, I noticed a lot of people liked it so let's let's do this one with with auto keys going to give me an enough time in the in the time slider here so maybe 200 frames to start with you can always add more later and i'm going to open graph editor because we always want to keep graph editor open when we're animating and actually the my first key went to a, a wrong so I, I want i want to go back to i deleted that key there I went back to frame 1, I have the two controls selected and I press Shift W and Shift E to, to have keys in the first pose. And because I have the auto key on from now on, I will whenever I, I go to another frame, I move it, it will automatically add keys. Keep, keep your eye on the uh, graph editor to make sure you don't add something you don't want there. But next we should Think about, we should time it maybe just acting, uh, looking at your watch or however you usually time animation by jumping in, in your room by yourself or whatever's your way of thinking animation. So let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to frame 20 to, to do something like this kind of a pose to, to get ready for the jump. I can maybe make it. I'm going to key the the other control as well so that I have key points for the for the for both. Then I'm going to go to frame 40. And there I'm going to maybe I'll, I'll make this kind of a this kind of a key there. So if you zoom out in the in the graph editor with F, you can see that keys are being created. And then I don't know I'll, I'll move them both up. Maybe something like that. They both have a key there. Need air. And then coming down. Shift W and Shift E just to make sure that we have keys. And oh yeah, it's it's a good idea not to not to make a key like this. Like even though it's a nice stretched lamp, nothing is really deformed, but it's always a good idea to to have it inside the, in, in within the ik range so nearly snapping but not not going out outside the the character so something like that i'm just going to check that the, it's going to come down all the way and then i don't know some sort of a settle 
bones and uh, the final post maybe it is looking at, at the camera I don't know where I got that idea from so now what we have is let's play this back okay way too slow uh, what we could do is select the base and the head if you like to work this way just seeing it it already being animated that's one way to work another option is to select you can select all your key points and go to the step tangents that means it's going to stay in that key until the next one comes up so that's more like having the key drawings but the next thing would be to to retime this because my my jump is not working at all definitely i need to go very quickly to the high point Maybe not that quickly so what you do is you move the keys in in graph editor you select them like if you want the whole end of the animation happen quicker you you move them holding shift it moves nicely it doesn't change the values it's just holding shift and middle mouse button you can make stuff happen earlier if you know that your the, your whole thing is happening just say too slow you can select everything uh, take the scale tool and again holding shift you can scale the whole animation down which makes the whole animation quicker or if it's too if it's too quick you can scale it up and everything is going to happen slower so maybe i'll, I'll leave the jam uh, leave the lamp midair for a bit longer and leave it hunched down for a bit longer as well and then to look in the camera as well just a little bit more time there let's play it back the next thing would be to make the make the poses a bit better i don't like that pose for the for the mid-air pose because we have the auto key on that should that should just update good enough for us now it, it it will need a lot of tweaking anyway it because it will look very different when, when once we start start animating it but the idea is as it the very same as in classical animation you think about your keyframes it then you start putting in a break breakdown pose of course the uh, maya will constantly in between stuff for you but you still you still need to know what you're meant to do so we go back to all the classical animation exercises and principles. Now, maybe the next thing would be to change that back to auto tangent. That's now going to look very weird and sluggish compared to our nice and snappy keyframes, key, uh, stepped keyframes. You just have to start now finessing it so that it's snappy again. So maybe put a breakdown post between these could be something like this so a little arch there then I'm gonna have a hold so I'm gonna copy and paste those that that key just to have a complete hold uh, select the keys go to copy and paste and check the paste options merge is what we really want here so that's um, that's our hold, but we also want this to be totally still, uh, not going uh, up and down as it as it does by default, because Maya tries to make it very smooth. So we go to flat tangents. That's completely slowing down, then then slowing out again. Again, a little breakdown pose going up a 
I'm going to select keep base and head. Just at the moment of taking off the ground, I want to make sure the tangents are linear. So it it does shoot off. Now the head is doing some a, a funny back and forth mo mo movement. So I better fix that pose. Be something like this rather. And again, maybe I'll go to look at the the touchdown pose and may, make sure they are both linear keys there. Stretched limb there. I'm gonna just look at the base now and I'm gonna move move that key forward. So there's gonna be overlapping action, well overlapping keys with the base and head because the, the head is gonna go up quicker and then we'll, the, the base is going to follow. Now I'm even going to exaggerate the whole thing by bringing the, the base up even more. You know, the head is already going down, then the base snaps down. Let's play that back. Okay, it is, this is a space lamp. You can also look at individual curves once you know what which is which so this is kind of the sideways movement we haven't really looked at the lamp from front yet which we probably should have done by now So that we have the the arcs going all dimensions. That's the up and down. That looks okay to me. Go slightly down. I don't know if we could go even lower. Not really, because it's going through the floor. movement every lamp jump is different and let's see let's see the final settle so again it would be nicer to have a hold or or maybe a, a more of a settle first and then the look to the camera so I'm gonna do just take the head and I'm going to copy those keyframes there and just do a settle. Maybe I'll, I'll put a flat tangent there so it, it slows down totally and then, then looks into the camera. Just check the, the front as well. Although what what really matters in CG is what what it looks like in the camera. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter how it is in this view if we're only going to see it from this view. If the camera is here, um, it depends. Sometimes you need to really be realistic and see that the balance is everywhere, and sometimes you need to just see what looks good in the camera. But now, because we still don't even have a camera, don't know which way the camera is looking at us. So it's better to just look at, look at the lamp from different a couple of different angles and, and see that it's doing what we want to. And again, slight breakdowns are always good, even even if we're going fairly pose to pose. Okay. And another thing, maybe if I want to an even bigger snap here. I could go back to that 
frame before the touchdown and exaggerate a bit that make it really step those that key linear as well so it really snaps there and here is my lamp jump <laughs> 